Lesson 9. Who were the gladiators? Almost 1500 years after they last fought to the death at the Colosseum in Rome, gladiators have lost none of their fascination for the public. Even now, the brooding remains of the Flavian Amphitheatre, as it is properly called, are the most immediate symbol of ancient Rome. But what kind of person was prepared to fight to the death against a fellow human being just to provide a mob with a half hour's entertainment? And what kind of person found this activity entertaining? Yet entertained the Romans certainly were, as their writing and numerous depictions of gladiatorial combat tell us. The glamour and horror of the arena is well captured in this slightly inaccurate 19th century painting by John Leon Jerome, which shows a victorious gladiator standing over his defeated foe, awaiting the verdict of the crowd. And that bunch in white immediately in front of the gladiator, who are giving such an enthusiastic thumbs down, are Vestal Virgins, by the way. Yet, to understand what is happening in a gladiatorial combat, we have to see the fight as the Romans saw it, and their perspective is somewhat different. For a start, when we consider the two combatants, from a technical viewpoint, that is to say, from a Roman technical viewpoint, they are not fighting to the death. They are already dead men. But one of them might redeem himself and get some glory in the process. All the gladiators in this mosaic are identified by name, and were probably celebrities in their day. While the Romans enjoyed the combat, they were fascinated and repulsed by the gladiators themselves. The original gladiators were condemned men or prisoners of war. And this is why some gladiator types had the equipment of Rome's former enemies, such as this Samnite and Thracian, fighting here as depicted on a Greek vase. Because of their origins, gladiators ranked slightly below the scum of society. And if gladiatorial combat had not been an option, these people would have simply been executed. So from the gladiator's point of view, the arena offered at least a chance. And this wasn't the case for everyone who appeared there. The damnati ad bestias, those condemned to the animals, were expected just to be ripped apart, and if the animals failed to do it, then gladiators would be ordered to step in and complete the ripping process. Here we see a man separating a bull tied to a bear, whilst another unwilling participant is um, encouraged to play his part in events. Even amongst gladiators, the damnati ad gladium were condemned to die by the sword within a set time usually two years. However, by the imperial period, there were volunteers for the gladiatorial schools, which were called ludi, since those down on their luck or simply desperate for fame found the potential rewards of a gladiatorial lifestyle irresistible. Nor was this a completely illogical choice. Gladiators received excellent rations and medical care. For example, Galen, the most famous physician of his day, originally practiced at the gladiatorial ludus of Pergamum. And you can see that this lot here are in tip-top shape, or they were before they entered the arena. But arena combat was a relatively infrequent event. It has been estimated that some gladiators fought no more than three or four times a year. And because the organiser of the games had to pay for any gladiators who were killed, not all fights were to the death. Many performances were simply exhibition matches, in which no one was seriously hurt. In fact, in some provincial arenas, fighting with edged weapons was proudly announced as an extra treat laid on through the beneficence of the organiser of the games. If he lasted five years, a gladiator was freed of his obligations and given the rudus, a wooden sword that signified his discharge. 
Of course, many ended up like this secretor, whose opponent, a retiarius, or net man, stands over him, about to finish off his opponent with the secretor's own sword. But, in the Roman world, life expectancy was low anyway, and the gladiator fighting in the amphitheatre had at least the consolation of knowing that he was likely to last as long as the emperor who was watching.